Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you for coming or coming back to Rakuten Optimist Conference. Uh, one year has passed since the last Optimist Conference. And, uh, well, we have done so many things. And today, uh, I was thinking about what shall we talk about. But there are so many things on the table. And I have decided to present to you with the most irrelevant uh, the business uh, from our core business, just to show you how disruptive we are. We are not just about e-commerce. We are not ju just about 5G. Rakuten is extremely disruptive, innovative, and creative company. So to, just to uh, let you know, these are the kind of things we are not uh, kind of uh, worried or afraid of doing. So I will show you one example which is about the medical project we are conducting right now. So please roll the video. In 2012, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I would have done anything for him. I explored every possibility. I flew all over the world. In 2013, I had a fateful encounter it was a flash of hope. Photoimmunotherapy. It was different from any other treatment I had ever heard of. This could be it, I thought. I had the same feeling as when I first realized that the internet would change the world. All I wanted was to save my father. I decided to personally support the development of photoimmunotherapy. My hopes grew as the pace of research accelerated. And through the eyes of my father, I realized that there's a whole world of patients in need. The mission to save my father became a mission to save people. I now wanted to deliver this treatment to as many cancer patients as possible, as soon as possible for the sake of people living with cancer. In 2011, Miguel Garcia Guzman founded Aspirian Therapeutics, Inc. in San Diego in the U.S. Dr. Hisataka Kobayashi of the National Cancer Institute in the U.S published a paper on photoimmunotherapy in the journal Nature Medicine. In 2012, Miki Mikitani learned that his father had cancer, and he searched the world for treatments. The National Cancer Institute began searching for potential companies to commercialize this therapy. Guzman applied immediately, obtaining exclusive license for development and commercialization. I was seeking for technologies that I thought could be transformational uh, for cancer treatments. In 2013, Miki was introduced to Dr. Kobayashi, a cousin of his friend Mr. Shimpo, whom he had known since founding Rakuten, Inc. しんぼさん、一回お会いさせてもらえませんかってことだったんでね。興味を持って、あの、いろんなこと聞いてこられるし、よく勉強されてるし、なんか、まあ、割合親しみやすい、面白い人やなという印象だったんですね。まあ、光
from the very beginning, he believed on us, he trusted us, we believe on him, and we trusted him. It was a miraculous meeting. Four great minds became one. Mickey and other investors who shared this resolve joined forces and the clinical trials began. Just three years after the phase one study, a global phase three study began for cancers of the head and neck. In 2019, determined to become number one in the pharmaceutical and medical device industry, the company rebranded to Rakuten Medical Inc. The therapy was designated under a Japan Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare fast-track designation system called Sakigake. To deliver this therapy to patients, Rakuten Medical is expanding its global reach. Rakuten Medical is going beyond R&D and commercialization of pharmaceutical products and medical devices. Our aim is to build sustainable healthcare ecosystems that give patients access to better cancer treatment regardless of their nationality or wealth. Giving it all to conquer cancer. Okay. Well, as uh, Steve Jobs mentioned his speech at Stanford, the every dots are connected. And this cancer project is also came from my personal contact, uh, which I built through our original business, which is Rakuten Ichiban Marketplace in Japan. So let's talk about uh, what we have done in Japan. As uh, already explained, uh, Rakuten means optimism in Japan. Uh, the first ca ca Chinese character, Raku, uh, means happiness, and Ten means heaven, basically. So you mean happy heaven, uh, that means let's be optimistic. So that was a basic concept of uh, Rakuten when I found it in 1997 uh, with my younger partner. So it has been already uh, 23, two years, it's going to be almost 23 years since we, uh, we started the project. Definitely, I did not reimagine, uh, you know, Rakuten can become uh, this big, uh, but uh, not only in terms of the size of our e-commerce businesses, but at the same time, the scope of the things we do and geographical expansion of our business model. Now, I will exp explain later, but Nakten is now becoming a kind of global brand. The first business we built was a very, very simple uh, marketplace model. Uh, we created the first in the world, uh, a kind of remote ordering capability to create a shop online. Before that, it was really, really difficult. So we allowed users to create a shop on the browser. Initial mar merchant was 30 merchants, and the first month sales was about 3,000 users as dollars, but I was buying about 2,000. <laughs> uh, so real transaction was about 1,000 USD. Uh, but now we became really, really big. We have very different, different business uh, philosophy from our competitors because the reason we set up, we started this marketplace is how to empower local economy, how to empower local brands, how to help the smaller and medium-sized merchants to compete against upcoming big e-commerce players like Amazon or against the big merchants. So we are not trying to really replace their business. We are kind of a catalyst uh, to re-empower their business model. We do not really disaggregate or disconnect user and buyer. We enhance them to get closer. So that's the biggest difference between us and company like Amazon. The, now, this is a kind of snapshot of where we are. 
I told you we started from two people. Now, last year's annual GDP was about 140 billion US dollars. Uh, the Japanese domestic e-commerce, meaning our marketplace business, was about 31 billion US dollars. So this year, we're going to get closer to uh, 40 billion. The global membership, uh, we have Viber, uh, which is very strong in Eastern European countries, Vietnam, Philippines, uh, in Russia. Uh, so the global membership has reached to 1.3 billion. The Japanese register member is about 107 million. Uh, and we have probably one of the most healthiest financial statement among internet companies. The model has evolved since I started Pure Marketplace 22 years ago. Now our core asset is membership, database, and brand. The brand we're going to talk about later. So if you have these three, we will be able to help many, many people, many, many companies. E-commerce, advertisement, digital content, fintech, telecom. Those are the five major areas. Now we are really trying to scale, not only in Japan, but globally too. In terms of the services, we all decided to come up with single brand strategy, Rakuten. Um, I, we had a really, really deep discussion about changing our brand name to more Americanized or Europeanized name uh, because Rakuten sounds pretty Japanese. And particularly, I had a very deep discussion, an open discussion, with uh, our American and European leaders about Shall we change to something much more sexier? Uh, <laughs> oh, I agree. No, no, we should stuck, uh, stick with Rakuten because Rakuten has a meaning, which is optimism. We know that the world is going to be very different in a good ways, in a bad ways. In a good ways, because of all this digestion, everything is going to become more convenient with AI and everything. Bad news about this is some of the people may lose job because what they are doing may be replaced by automated machines. Or we don't know what is going to happen to the climate of the Earth. I was at Harvard talking about this just last week. It is really, really scary. Last week in Japan, we had a, in Tokyo, we had the biggest typhoon for the last 50 years. Everybody was so scared, and the amount of the rain we had was unbelievable. But probably, uh, we expect this is going to start happening every year. That means that global climate change is probably inevitable. So we have to think about many, many things, but at the same time, we need to be optimistic. We need to use our wisdom, our technology, our teamwork of the community to re make sure that we create sustainable society, not only for our generation, but to the next generation as well. So uh, I think being optimistic is extremely important. Last 20 years, our e-commerce has grown from almost zero to uh, 140 uh, billion US dollars of global uh, transactions. This is an unbelievable. In Japan, uh, we are number one in many, many sectors. We are the biggest e-commerce company, uh, bigger than Amazon. Uh, we are already the biggest credit card company in Japan, Rakuten Card. We are growing much faster than any other credit card companies, yet we are size-wise already number one, growing about 25 to 30 percent year on year. Mobile payment, internet bank, e-money, 
point program, which I'm going to talk about in, later. Online travel, our mobile virtual network operator business, which we have evolved to mobile network operator. We're not really virtual network operator anymore. We are mobile network operator. And golfing, gaming, and many, many things. We do about 100 different businesses. Each business is independent, but we connect through our brand name, through the site kind of consistent design, uh, with a point program and membership, and so forth. So it's kind of unique. From this week, we decided to put more energy into fashion. We sell about over $8 billion of fashion product a year in Japan, but we want to grow faster. So we decided to re-help the Japanese designers and, and Japanese brands uh, by sponsoring uh, Fashion Week Tokyo. So uh, good news is, up to last year, this was Amazon Fashion Week Tokyo. <laughs> From this year, it's going to rock the Fashion Week Tokyo. <laughs> but yet, we, we, we're going to really make uh, many disruptions. Uh, well, this is a good example, so if I may spend a couple more times, minutes about this. The um, Japanese fashion has a very, very uh, unique uh, character. And European big uh, fashion conglomerate, uh, such as LVMH or Keating, they all like Japanese fashion. And some of the Japanese fashion brands became big globally, but most of the brands are still very, very domestic. And there's a big gap between kind of general image of Japanese fashion against real situation of Japanese fashion companies. So there's a big gap, and our intention is to fill this gap. So use Lactin Fashion Week Tokyo as kind of a, you know, a vehicle to promote uh, the uh, Japanese fashion to more uh, global audiences, including America, USA. Uh, we also started to make a huge investment into logistics. After all, we need to deliver the product to the consumer, one way or another. Sometimes uh, through conventional uh, you know, delivery companies, or with more unique advanced technology, such as UGV, driverless, driverless truck, or drone uh, by air. But we have decided to do end-to-end -end logistic service, meaning that we do not really rely on third-party logistic companies such as Japan Postal Office or Yamato Delivery Company, but yet we're going to deliver product by ourselves. We feel that this is going to be a bottleneck all over the world, actually delivery of the product. If you consider why Amazon is strong, of course, they have very good technology, AWS, but at the same time, they invested so much into their warehouse and also not right now to their last one mile delivery network. So uh, in Japan, uh, we are going to cover, uh, by the end of this year, 60% of the population, we have our own delivery uh, capability. All is, of this is to help our partner. We really don't mind whether our partner is a big company or a small company. That's our philosophy. We do not really discriminate the company because of the size of their business. That's a kind of Japanese way. We treat small company and big company as if they are the same one client. Uh, and we came up with a new uh, catchphrase, work together. We help client, brands, merchants. They will make profit, and we will make profit. But their profit comes, comes first. 
because of this philosophy and also all these creative, innovative challenges we are making, Lakten was chosen as the most likely company to survive over the next 100 years. Uh, so we are extremely proud of it. Then we started to re-globalize our business. The first thing I have done, what I knew was Japanese hospitality is very, very special. It's not like you do it because it's good for your business. The, the culture itself has the mindset of omotenashi, the Japanese hospitality. Whether you go to visit your friend's house or you go to uh, you know, meet somebody by accident, uh, we would like to be as polite as possible and as hospitable as possible. That's the kind of culture of Japan. And my strategy is how can we keep this hospitality mindset yet globalize our organization? Then we will be able to make our clients, you know, customers, everybody happier. So the first thing I did eight years ago is I stood up. I, we do a, what we call Monday morning meeting, gathering almost all employees into one room. Now it's too big, so all the offices are connected through video conference. And one day I, I told them, uh, from today, our official language is going to be English. And everybody was shocked. And they were silent for the next few minutes. Because, you know, because they, can't, they couldn't speak English at all at that time. But I was so committed, it took eight years uh, for us from start to get to the current level. But now almost everyone in Rakuten can communicate in English. And our score of the test score, TOEIC, has improved from 526, which is below average, to 838, which is way above average. And now everybody can speak and communicate and do business in English. This enabled us to globalize our organization significantly. Now, almost 80% of the engineers we are hiring in Japan or globally are non-Japanese. Of course, they communicate in English. Uh, and also, uh, we have over 150 uh, PhDs and MDs for our research lab called Lacta Institute of Technologies. So, of course, AI is going to be very, very important. Virtualization is going to be very, very important. We cannot just live with just a service mind or the business model. We actually need to build our own proprietary technology to support all of your businesses. In order to do it, we need to have a global presence. So outside of American-based uh, you know, internet service companies, probably we are the only one which can do this. Set aside, they are Chinese big guys, which are, I think, in, in my honest opinion, a little bit different category of the companies. So we intend to build a global platform, seriously. We don't want to be a just Japanese company. We want to be a global company. That's why we paid uh, you know, so much of uh, our resources and globalize our organization and people uh, spending eight years. This is the global uh, footprint of uh, Rakuten right now. Of course, one of the biggest uh, the business is uh, Rakuten Reward. We have decided to rebrand Ebates to Rakuten Rewards. This was very, very aggressive, very, very risky project, but yet we have decided to do it. Of course, all the brands, Viber, Rakuten Viber, the uh, Uwaki, which was a streaming service in Europe, is now Rakuten TV. So now Rakuten brand is spreading 
all over the world. And because of this brand unification, it is helping the growth of, of our business. Just uh, want to talk a little bit about the design of uh, a new logo. The bottom kind of uh, slash is uh, one in Chinese character. So we want to be one service, one team, one team within Rakuten Group, one team with our most important clients, like people who are attending today, thank you very much. Uh, and that is the concept of uh, this, this new uh, logo. As I have mentioned, we rebranded eBay to Rakuten. Of course, internally, we had a lots of discussion about this, some pros and cons, but synergies, ecosystem, and also the global ecosystem is going to be definitely a big positive factor to even grow our cashback service and help your service. One of our uniqueness is uh, sports branding. We have uh, the baseball team now in Japan. Uh, we just missed the uh, Japan World Series, uh, but we won five years ago. And we also bought uh, Taiwanese number one uh, baseball team in Taiwan. So we're going to have Rakuten Eagles and Rakuten Monkeys. <laughs> the Monkeys is Taiwanese, by the way. And uh, our football team, Bisek Kobe, now we have the best midfielder in the world, Anders Iniesta, uh, very famous uh, German striker, Lukas Podorowski. We have ATP 500 tournament called Rakuten Open in Japan. And from this year, from next November, uh, we are going to sponsor Davis Cup. So Davis Cup will be Davis Cup by Rakuten. And we have really redone uh, the uh, format of the tournament. So it is going to be totally one of the most uh, important World Cup type tournament in the world. Of course, uh, go, uh, the FC Barcelona uh, and most importantly, Golden State Warriors. <laughs> yeah. I, ho I hope they will do well this year. <laughs> A little bit worried about it, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh, Spartan Race. So because of this, uh, our brand awareness among the internet users is going up significantly. Now Taiwan is 75.5%, but this is before our acquisition of baseball team. I think this is going to get to over 95% by the end of next year. I know the you know, power of sports, especially if you can put your brand name uh, into the, the name of the team, it is going to be extremely powerful. U.S. was single digit, uh, to be very honest, when I spoke with you last year. Now uh, it is getting close to 60%. Our goal is to rise it up beyond 70% beyond by the end of the year. The Spain, uh, Europe is about 70%, and the, the Canada is about 53%. So we will bring this up to 100% in a few years. So every single internet user will know Rakuten brand. And we are also uh, chosen by future uh, for future uh, 50s. Uh, let's talk about what we are going to do uh, in the US, in the Americas. Our journey in US started in 2005. The first thing uh, I decided to acquire was uh, Rakuten Marketing. It used to be called Linkshare. So Linkshare is affiliate marketing company. You click through somebody's sites, and you get the uh, e-commerce company will pay percentage to Linkshare, and the Linkshare will pay to the publishers. Very simple kind of um, distribution system of the traffic and a pay for performance business. And we also uh, in, uh, bought uh, the marketplace, and we bought ebook company. We bought the uh, we invested into Pinterest. We were the one of the first investor into Pinterest. 
the Biki is video streaming company, globalizing it with uh, the community. Slice, now Rakuten Intelligence, will tell us uh, who is buying what from where. So first four years, no, so first uh, nine years, I'm sorry, what we have been focusing on is trying to understand what's going on in the United States. We could not really come up with a very, very aggressive strategy to directly compete against the big players. So we have decided to really gather the intelligence data and we really try to figure out a unique business model to help the, uh, again, the shops and brands and so forth. So we have decided to buy Ebates because Ebates was growing so fast and they, we, we, we analyzed the user base and it was so good. We're not talking about the bargain hunters. We are talking about the very, very loyal and yet, you know, kind of well-to-do, relatively higher income customers love Ebates. So uh, we decided to, you know, buy Ebates and integrate into our ecosystem. And then we made a big investment to Lyft. Lyft was, we're going to have uh, John Zimmer uh, joining uh, the fireside chat with me this afternoon. We asked him about this, but Lyft was having a really, really difficult problem at the time. Uber was over 90%. Lyft was about 6%. They were running out of money. But yet, we invested into Lyft. Everybody thought we are kind of crazy, but we had a data from Lacta Intelligence. What I have done is let's analyze younger people, which one they are using. One of the data points, which is kind of very, very surprising for me, was even at that time, like four years ago, when Lyft was going down like this, Still, like f over 50% of Millennium in San Francisco was using Lyft, not Uber. I said, oh my god, younger people use Lyft. That's very, very encouraging news. And the value of the company was not that expensive, to be very honest. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is data is important, right? Data is very, very important. The reason why we bought Ebates is because the fact we had a link share. We had a very good comparison of Ebates versus Ebates competitors. Right. Well, what we can do is we can use the data we have and share with you and help you to grow. And after our investment into Lyft, now Lyft market share went over 30% sometimes close to 40%. It's not by just coincidence. Lyft has been the client of Lacta Intelligence. We have all this data. They use it in a very, very smart way. Recently, my friend Dara of Uber came to me and asked, hey, Mickey, you need to sell those data to Uber too. And I, we couldn't exist, so now both of them using our data. <laughs> but what I'm telling you is besides Amazon, besides maybe Google, we have most transactional data than everybody, anybody. So of course, we have to be very careful about the pri not breaching the privacy, but our intent is to utilize the data directly or indirectly to help you guys, as much as we can. So please count on us about, about it. Most specifically about our e-commerce. Basically, we have uh, three businesses. Of course, rewards, that's the biggest business we have for us. It is going to get to 20 billion. In reality, it is the third largest marketplace uh, behind Amazon and eBay right now. The Rakuten marketplace is also growing. But we also need to use our you know, traffic generation engine, which is our, our affiliate business, 
And we have to recreate a logistic platform to help you guys to compete against giant companies such as Amazon. Otherwise, it is going to be difficult. So we started to invest into the logistics business in, in the US too. This is not going to be like a very, very short term project. It is going to take a, lot, a little bit longer. Uh, it's going to be two, three years project. But we would like to build uh, one day delivery network, uh, to, which is available to anybody. Membership data AI is going to be, again, the core of our T triangle strategy. The American's uh, gross margin sales uh, has uh, reached 21.1 billion US dollars, and America's membership is 35 million. Lactin marketing uh, is uh, doing very well, always being ranked number one affiliate marketing network in the world, in, in, the, in the US. For eight consecutive years, we do about 27 billion impressions uh, every year, uh, and 152 million uh, orders uh, every year. So it's really, really big. But we, have, we need to integrate and create more tangible value uh, to our clients. Lactin intelligence, without the data, you cannot go anywhere in the, these days. Uh, so it is extremely important uh, function for us. For us, internally to, to decide where to go and also provide this kind of intelligence to our client. And so tell us what kind of data you want. We know we can promote movies. We know we can sell this product. We know, you know how to promote hotels. We know how we can increase the, the rise of the lift in a big, big way, in a very, very accurate data. So it is very unique. So if you are interested, please ask our account person to how you can utilize this. Besides Lactin Intelligence, we have many, many tools now we are building to help you. As you know, we talked about uh, this morning, importance of online to offline. It's not just like pure e-commerce, internet shopping being delivered to your home. You may want to enhance more in-store pickup, which is probably much more profitable for you. Uh, makes sense for many uh, users or customers. Uh, but the important thing is, we, know, we need to know when he or she is going to arrive to my store. We don't want to let them wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That is going to be a bad experience. So but it is very difficult to uh, do estimated time of arrival, ETA analysis, with just uh, GPS app. When GP, uh, your phone is active, you can do it. But if your phone is not active, you cannot do it. So you need to have artificial intelligence. You need to have ability to use all the sensors in your phone to uh, re-estimate when he is coming. The, also, again, logistics. Uh, we are going to uh, make a big investment uh, to help uh, you guys. Even for the big retailers, we realize their warehouse are not really or, you know, optically designed uh, to, uh, for e-commerce. The fintech, as you know, mentioned, in Japan, we are very, very big. Uh, we are the biggest credit card company, biggest online bank. Uh, we have general insurance, life insurance, every sort of type of uh, uh, electric payment uh, we have. Uh, we intend uh, to do the same thing in the United States. After all, uh, you need to own a bank. That is our philosophy. We, of course, already have a Japanese bank. Uh, also, we have a banking license in Europe. Uh, and uh, we established the bank in 2017. Uh, just recently, uh, we acquired a banking license in Taiwan. Uh, and in the US, uh, we are applying for industrial bank charter, meaning if we can get this, we will be able to issue 
our own credit card and make our ecosystem even much stronger. Just for the indication of the, what the cashless economy is going to look like, I am kind of disruptive entrepreneur, so I ask my guys to make our stadium for the baseball and for soccer completely cashless, meaning, meaning you cannot use cash. You need to have a credit card or you need to have a touchless payment or something, otherwise you cannot even buy beer. And this was, really, again, criticized and attacked uh, by uh, the Japanese uh, media. But after all, what have happened is food and books, uh, the beverage sales grew 26.7% in my baseball stadium. And in our football stadium, it grew 50%. So cashless, digitized economy, will definitely help. It will take away uh, the, all these complicated processes of cash, ha cash handling, uh, and it is going to help a lot. About the content business, we have several content business. Uh, for example, the Viki, this is a global um, you know, uh, e uh, video content platform. Uh, we can subtitle into 200 different languages in a few days without any cost. Uh, it is growing nicely. And Rakuten TV is now growing very fast uh, in Europe. We are already in 42 countries. In uh, most of the Smart TV um, remote controller, uh, LG, Samsung, Hisense, uh, Hire, uh, and uh, Philips, uh, you have basic TV buttons, Netflix, Amazon, and Rakuten TV. So our um, video business in uh, Europe is growing so fast. And uh, finally, uh, the ebook Kobo uh, is growing very fast. Uh, basically, uh, Amazon Kindle has 75% market share. Uh, Rakuten Kobo uh, has a 25% market share. So uh, this is the um, uh, almost all what I want to talk about. But if I may add, one more topic, which is going to be related to the next session, which is mobile network revolution, which we are going to do. Up to now, Lockdown has been building very unique ecosystem using our, you know, of course, engineering capability, our service mindset, our philosophy to help the merchant. Obviously, network speed has improved significantly. The cloud computing took place. The, right now, it's very different from 20 years ago. But now, we are going to face another big revolution, which is the 5G. So for the 5G, we are the front runner, not AT&T, not Verizon, not NTT Docomo. The internet company, Japanese internet company, is forefront of 5G revolution. So I would like to run the video about this. The future of telecom is fast and nimble, and it takes place in the cloud. For traditional telecom networks, that's a challenge. They're racing ahead but their reliance on legacy architectures and custom hardware is holding them back. Right at the moment when 5G is about to change everything. Revolutionary speed, transformational possibilities. At Rakuten, we're ready for it. We're building the first end-to-end, -end, fully virtualized, cloud-native 5G-ready mobile network, which means we're not tied down by custom hardware. We don't implement upgrades device by device. Instead, we deploy all our services via software in the cloud, where we can break every functionality down into microservice components, each component its own independent software program. Using microservices, we can develop new innovative applications rapidly, test them comprehensively, 
deploy them reliably. Modifications like upgrades, maintenance, capacity scaling are faster, cost less, and don't require downtime. And new services can be deployed nimbly, at scale, automatically on demand. Trusted code, faster delivery, continuous innovation. The cloud-native network for the future. Rakuten. So next session is about 5G. I'm sure they're going to come about this, so I'm going to kind of fast forward. Uh, but what we have done uh, is we have basically disaggregated uh, hardware and software, which everybody thought is kind of a crazy idea. And we did everything in 18 months. Uh, our network uh, is not really uh, depending on any specific network devices. Uh, we put everything on open hardware. Uh, that means we are not re you know, kind of controlled or dominated uh, by any hardware companies uh, such as Nokia, uh, Huawei, or Ericsson or Samsung. Uh, that is the revolution. Uh, not only is it cheaper and uh, cheaper for the investment and cheaper for the operating cost, but it is going to be create much more flexibility, and we can connect. Uh, 4G antenna, 5G antenna with edge computing network will become intelligent. Network was just a pipe up to now, but network will have AI, meaning most of the things will be done on the network level, and the latency is going to be much less. But long story short, uh, if the latency is almost zero uh, with edge computing, if you want to play big games, such as like uh, Fortnite or Overwatch or whatever, you don't need to have a high-spec PC. Uh, you will do it uh, on an edge level. So uh, that's one of the examples. Uh, but I think 5G is going to change not only gaming, but entire ecosystem on, on, on the, the nature of OTT services. The speed is going to be super fast, of course. Uh, and, but it is going to be an unbelievable experience for everybody. The edge, again, everybody's now started to talk about edge now because of the latency. People don't like waiting. Even if it's on a small screen, they don't like waiting. Uh, and if you want to do something smart, uh, interesting, now you need to go all the way to the server and come back. It's going to take a few seconds. And those few seconds, for human being, is very, very difficult to um, accept. Uh, so uh, how to make all this complicated calculation fast and get back to you is going to be uh, very, very important. We also is going to, are going to change uh, the user experience completely. Uh, what we are going to do uh, is we are going to reconvert mobile experience to internet. Everything will be centered around one application, uh, which is going to be called Link. You can do group call, group chat. You can call from uh, desktop. Messaging SMS is going to be seamless. Whether you're on a Wi-Fi or 4G or 5G or 3G, it doesn't matter. Uh, it will have a game, AI. You can transfer the file. You will have a cloud storage. And uh, of course, you can do voice and video messaging. So everything is going to be on one uh, uh, application. The way uh, we design is going to be very different uh, from the way traditional telecom company designed mobile service. Because we are the first, the world first internet company to get into the platform layer. And we will see how revolutionary it is going to be. We have already uh, received uh, so many uh, requests uh, from uh, ma many governments, uh, including yours, uh, about the possibility of um, expanding our platform outside of Japan. Because it's really, really open. We are not really you know, kind of segregated, inward-looking, hardware-dependent network. We like, what we are doing is we are making mobile network more 
democratized network. Uh, we are doing, trying to be as open as possible uh, and as fair as possible, as cheap as possible and as fast as possible. That's what we are going to do. Uh, so we would like to bring our MNO technology to uh, other countries, include, including potentially uh, United States of America uh, in the future. Lastly, uh, as you have already learned, we do many stuff uh, from the cancer treatment to very uh, basic internet marketing to e-commerce using intelligence and data, the, the finance, fintech. Uh, but the, our philosophy basically is work together. Uh, we do not want it to be crash anything. We would like to be more collaborative. We would like to have more friends uh, work together, help each other, and then make a di big uh, disruption uh, to the world. That's, uh, that's why I'm still running this company, and I hope uh, we can help, help you more in the future. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>